Oh, uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that just learned that the Third Reich took place in Germany. <laughs> Who knew? Speaking of Germany, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Secret Hitler. In Secret Hitler, five to ten players are going to attempt to unmask the evil uh, fascist dictator that was Adolf Hitler and, of course, attempt to pass liberal reforms. Unless, of course, you are a fascist or Hitler, in case you want to grave power and pass your fascist policies. This is a social deduction game, uh, similar to games like The Resistance, and uh, it kind of depends on who the liberals are versus who the fascists are. Now, depending on player count, you're going to use different fascist boards. And these different fascist boards have different actions that can be covered up as you play through it. But you're always going to have the, of course, liberal board. Liberal board is always the same. And, of course, we're talking about classical liberals uh, that existed at the time. Of course, Germany's various moderate political parties uh, that existed uh, during the Weimar Republic. Now, what is going to happen here is uh, the you, you get envelopes, and these envelopes are going to tell you two things. Number one, which party you belong to, whether you are a liberal or whether you are a fascist. But you're also going to find out what secret role you are. Now, whatever secret role you are doesn't really matter, unless, of course, you are Hitler. Hitler's uh, Hitler, it really matters who Hitler is, and so it's important that everybody gets a card, so everybody sees that everybody else has a card, but, of course, only one of you is Hitler. Now, what is going to happen is, at the beginning of the game, one player is going to be the president, randomly chosen, and the president is going to nominate a uh, chancellor. The chancellor, then, uh, there'll have to be a vote, and all the players can vote a yeah or nine to the proposed chancellor. You go ahead, if you select the chancellor, the government is, has been established, the government's in power, and you can go ahead then and proceed to the legislative session. Now, during the legislative session, the president is going to draw three... Uh, policies from the policy deck. Now, there are many more, almost twice as many uh, fascist policies as liberal policies, but he's going to draw three of them. Now, he's going to see these, and they're either going to, of course, be liberal or, or fascist, or a mix thereof. He is essentially going to take one, uh, put it down, and pass two to the chancellor. The chancellor then is going to decide which one of those is the policy that will be enacted. He'll place one face down, and he'll put the other one on the board, if it's a liberal policy or a fascist policy. Now, the fascists need six policies to win. The liberals only need five policies to win, but there's a few other things. If ever the fascists have three policies enacted and the person who becomes chancellor is Hitler, boom, they automatically win the game. Now, also, too, if Hitler is ever assassinated during the game, the liberals win. How that happens is whenever a uh, fascist policy is placed over a certain action, and there are different kinds of executive actions, uh, one of them is one player gets assassinated, the president essentially decides who gets assassinated. If the president picks Hitler, then uh, he, he is correct, then the liberals win the game. That was Hitler. Oh! Oh! Now, there are some other actions, <clears throat> executive actions that can come up. For instance, uh, the president can examine the top three policies of the desk, uh, deck. He can't rearrange them, but he can see them. Um, you can actually investigate another player's uh, party card, not necessarily their identity, but their party affiliation, so you can get that uh, out of the way. So there's different uh, actions that can come up during the game for the president to to do. So people are getting the, these ideas and pictures about who potentially are the fascists and who are the liberals. Now I should point out, just like at the resistance at the beginning of the game, the uh, fascists will be able to see each other, so the fascists will know who each other are, but the liberals will not know who the fascists are. So that is basically in a nutshell how you play Secret Hitler. Uh, there may be a few little details I'm leaving out, but, but essentially that's it. That's the game. Uh, this is, again, very reminiscent of the resistance it's a very similar social deduction game and but but of course it's got this this theme in it which is you know potentially um you know some some could say it's potentially a little offensive personally i think it's handled in such a way that it's a it's kind of cartoony and yeah it's got hitler in it but you know what that was part of history and uh this is actually kind of an interesting way i think to uh kind of for lack of a better word educate some people into exactly you know how these things worked. Um, it's I'm, I'm frequently amazed, as an historian myself of Nazi Germany, um, I'm frequently amazed that uh, um, you know people in in the United States in this country don't really understand how a parliamentary system works and exactly w what it is. And um, 
you can't really understand the how Hitler came to power without understanding how he played that particular system. Um, for instance, the Weimar system gave out, uh, you know, wh whoever was voted into power, whatever party was voted into power, was in power. There wasn't any kind of, uh, of kind of a, a, you know, they didn't have to pass a certain number of votes in order to get into a seat in parliament. Uh, in 1949, when they when they constituted the federal government of Germany, the, the, the West German government, they actually had, I think it was the 5% rule. You had to gain at least 5% of the total votes in order for your party to be represented in the Reichstag. And the hope was that would make it so that you wouldn't uh, you, you couldn't have just all of these mega parties, you know, mega mini parties throughout the uh, through the Reichstag that it held, kind of created that breeding ground that allowed Hitler to come to power. There's your history lesson. Um, so, the, so, so it's interesting. Uh, the theme is interesting to me, and it's fun, and it's also again the artwork's kind of car cartoony, so it doesn't take itself too seriously, and certainly no one is 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 making light of, of some of the great tragedies that happened um, that the Nazis brought to to Europe. But at the same time, it's a it's a fun theme, um, an educational theme. The gameplay itself uh, is, again, it's fun and it's intense. You're, you're two or three turns into it, and you're trying to read people. And you're trying to guess uh, based on what they're doing, who is legit and who is not legit. And you're trying to guess, uh, you, you're trying to convince people, you're trying to negotiate with people. You're trying to convince people, you know, why you think someone is dirty or why you think someone is clean. And it's very fun. A very, very fun game. I really, really enjoyed Secret Hitler quite a bit. Um... I really don't have anything negative to say about this game, other than, again, it may be a little too similar to the Resistance. If, if you've already got the Resistance, I don't know that you need to pick this one up if if, if the theme's not not catchy enough for you. I, I actually kind of felt that that would be the case going into this game, but again, I really like the theme, um, and, and I like it. And I, I could see myself playing this and the Resistance, you know, interchangeably side by side. But I, I for me, it's worth having both of them. Uh, so the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Secret Hitler is go ahead and buy it. It's a whole lot of fun. You're going to be laughing. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on the Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on the discriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. And if you would like to learn more about Nazi Germany and the rise of Adolf Hitler, I recommend the following books. The Third Reich by Michael Burley. The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William Shirer. The Coming of the Third Reich by Richard J. Evans. Adolf Hitler by John Toland. Hitler, 1889-1936 Hubris and 1936-1945 Nemesis by Ian Kershaw. These books and more are available in your local library. Please somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going There is a direct correlation oh, yeah. between the amount of bourbon I consume and how fascist I am. <laughs>